If you provide Gmail accounts to your students, you probably aren't interested in allowing them to send inappropriate messages to one another or staff members. Let's configure a dirty word list and look at the configuration options for preventing inappropriate emails. Hi, my name is John Sawash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. To get started, we are going to navigate to the apps section of the Google Admin Console and then Google Workspace and then down to Gmail. Now, there are a lot of settings inside of Gmail, so I'll point you in the right direction. We're going to head down to compliance, which is down towards the bottom. And this is where you can configure all kinds of rules related to email compliance. We are going to be focusing on the objectionable content section. Now, the first thing is make sure that you're only applying these rules to the organizational unit you intend to do so. Um, you know, I have my domain divided into staff and students. I'm only going to apply this objectionable content filter to my student organizational unit. So I'm going to click on that and that's where I'll begin configuring my setup. I'm going to create a rule and the first thing you're going to do is just give it a name and I've got a couple set up to demo for you. Probably most likely you're going to just include all of these internal and external inbound and outbound um, give it a name you know banned word list dirty word list etc and then in step two this is where you will enter a list comma separated of your objectionable rules now this is where you need a good list because your knowledge of inappropriate words is no match for the creativity of a student. Um, I have a list that includes many misspellings, use of letters in place of numbers and things like that. Um, I will put the link to this list in the video description. You can open that up, just copy those and paste them into uh, this area. Now, this list is designed to be the, an, an egregious list. Like there's no appropriate use of the words on this list because we really want to avoid any false positives. Um, this list is pretty good. Doesn't mean you will never have a false positive, but it's, it's pretty good. So there aren't kind of a lot of words on here that are gray. Um, you can look at the list and judge for yourself and modify it uh, as you see fit. So we've got our um, emails to affect, what words we're watching for, and then step three is what do you want to do about it? Now, there are three options. Option one is the simplest and the easiest. If a word on the list is discovered, that message can't be sent. And you just type in a message here. Um, the message essentially bounces. A reply is sent to the sender, says you can't do this. That's simple and easy. You'll never know about it. It just won't be sent. That's option one. Now, option two is to reroute that rule. Um, so a message is sent with an inappropriate uh, word in it. We are going to do a couple of things. The primary one is we're going to change envelope recipient. And then instead of the intended re uh, recipient, it will be whoever you designate. So an assistant principal, an administrator, guidance counselor, you pick. Um, I also recommend that you prepend a subject because the way this works, it doesn't say like message rerouted for your review. It just sends the message to that person. And they're going to think that they are receiving this email with inappropriate language. So I add a um, little note here, flag message, and that allows the guidance counselor to filter their messages into a folder. They know what that is. Before you do this, make sure that you notify this person um, and that you clarify what your disciplinary procedure is. So when a message is received, flagged and received, what are you going to do about it? Clarify all of that before you put this rule uh, into place. Now, the third option is not my favorite, but I'll mention it, is to quarantine that message so it doesn't get sent. It doesn't get blocked. It goes into this 
holding area and someone with admin console access has to go in and review it and decide if they're going to send it forward or uh, reject it. I don't like this because I don't have time to look at this quarantine on a regular basis. My goal is for this list in particular not to have a lot of false positives. So if this rule is triggered, it's probably inappropriate. That's uh, that's my perspective anyways. Um, the quarantine is also here in the Gmail settings. So I'll go back to settings for Gmail. And this is where you're going to see your quarantines and messages that are flagged will um, go here. And you'll have, that, again, the option to block it or send it forward. I've got an example that's already in there. I'll click on it and uh, you can you know, decide what you want to do about that, um, that message. We'll click allow, for example. Let me show you what this looks like uh, from a student and an administrator perspective. Right, so here's a student account. Compose this, send it to another student. And go boop. Hit send. This will take about five, 10 seconds to send, check, and then reject. Um, and the student will get a rejection message with whatever notice that I've included um, <clears throat> in the rule. Here it is. It's blocked, inappropriate language, shame on you, you can't do it. So that's option one. Now, the second demo uh, I have set up is just the word blockhead. So again, compose a message, send it to the same student. Blockhead. This one is going to be rerouted to my inbox, and it's also going to be flagged. So it will show that it's a flagged message, um, and then I can you know, take action, meet with that student to you know, talk to them about their behavior. So that's the second option, and then the third option is that quarantine, which we just looked at. I just don't want to have to go into that quarantine on a regular basis to review and send on those messages. So that's my least favorite of uh, the three options. If you're interested in more Google Admin tips like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got a variety of videos that'll help you use the Google Admin Console to effectively manage your users and devices. And if you're interested in weekly tips on using the Admin Console, make sure you sign up for the Google Admin Weekly, my email newsletter.